Hello everybody and welcome back to chapter 3 of our PSD to HTML series. So we've covered the design so far, we've covered the markup creation. In chapter 3 we will slice out the PSD and we'll be able to do this one fairly quickly because as you'll learn, thanks to the advancements in CSS, we can mimic a lot of things just using the browser like rounded corners and gradients and we don't have to rely so much on images if we don't need to. Okay, so here is our project. So I'll hide the grids and again, let's just look through here and figure out what we specifically need to slice out. And then I'm going to show you the method that I personally use to slice out images. So first, the site name, you know what? In old times, we would have had to use an image there because you see it's a custom font and then it has a little bit of text shadow above it. But we can do that all with CSS, so I'm going to skip that part. The navigation area, we can use normal text with text shadow to create that. Now, again, with this input right here, you might have thought that we needed to use an image here, something like slice this out and repeat it. We can do this all with CSS3 gradients, and in the browsers that don't support CSS gradients, we can just fall back to a dark blue color. They will be just fine. No need to do it. All right, let's see what else we have here. These images, I definitely need these images. So I'm going to grab that. This divider, we could technically do that in CSS, but we might save ourselves some time and just grab that as an image. All right, let's see what else we need to grab. I need these two images, this one right here and the one behind it. Uh, the button, I don't need the button per se, but what I do need is maybe this background. Now, I might show you a little trick where we could actually create this with a mixture of CSS and masking and creating noise with the canvas, but that might go beyond the scope of this tutorial. We'll see. For now, we will just grab something like that so that we can repeat our button background. Uh, let's see what else. Here, you see this little arrow? We're going to create that with CSS, so no images. Uh, we need these two sample images, this one and this one. Uh, we'll need our sponsor images. Most of these are sample images anyways that would be changed out. All of this right here, our tabbing system, that'll be created with all CSS. And anything else? The inputs we'll create manually. We'll grab these four images and that's it really. So we don't have that much to cut out. So let's begin. I'm going to begin by clicking on the selector tool and I want to make sure that the auto select tool is turned on right here. And what this will do is if I open up my layers palette, when I click on an element, it'll automatically select the layer or the group that it's contained in. So for example, if I click on this image right here, you'll see that it automatically switched to the footer and then I can filter down from that point. All right, so let's zoom out here and begin. I'm gonna start with our social networking icons. So again, selector tool or I can press the letter V. So I'm going to click on it and you'll see it switches to the header and now I can filter down to the icons and if I hide each one of these you can see what we're working with. So the first one I want is Facebook. So to select it on the Mac I can hold down command or alt on the PC. So if I click that it'll select it and you'll see the marching ants come around it like so. At this point, we could use the slice tool, but a popular alternative is to do kind of a copy and paste method. So I'll show you the method I use. So again, I'm going to hit command and select that. Next, I'm going to hit command or control C, and that's going to copy it. Next, I'm going to create a new file, but I could also do that by pressing command N. So I'll do that. Now, what you'll see here is that the width and height have automatically been set to the dimensions of what I copied. It's very helpful. So I'll say OK. And now all I have to do is paste it in. Or again, I could hit Apple V that you're probably familiar with. So now if I zoom in, everything looks great there. But there's one thing is we have that white background. So if I were to change the background to say red, that would show up. What I want here though is to have any background color and that should be decided within my CSS file not through the image. So I will deselect the background color and now it's a transparent background which means it needs to be saved as the file type of a PNG and not just any PNG, a 24-bit PNG. Now if you're not familiar with this don't let it confuse you it's simply a compression method that allows for transparency. So I will click save for web and devices or you can see I can use this shortcut here which on the Mac is shift option command s. So I'll save for web 
and I want to make sure that if I want transparency, I have to save it as a ping. So in general, JPEGs are going to be for your photos and anything that contains a gradient. A ping 8 is going to be for anything simple, little, little graphics with solid colors. And ping 24 is for the same type, but anything that also has transparency. So I'll save it as a ping 24. Click OK. So at this point, I can choose where to save it. I'll save it into site name, images, and we need to give it a folder. We'll call it icons. And the first one we saved was Facebook. So I'll call it facebook.ping. Now, that should take care of that one. So if I go and open this up, images, icons, Facebook, we have our first icon. Now another method is to take all of these images and use them as a sprite. And I'll show you how to do that later. So a sprite is simply a way to group multiple images into one image. That way the browser only has to load one larger image than multiple small images. And that's called a sprite. And we'll go over, there's even sprite generators available that'll do this for you. All right, so let's go ahead and get the next one. So we'll get Dribble. Again, Command C to copy, Command N to create a new file, Command Paste, Deselect, or there's even an option when you create the new file to use a transparent background. And then I'm gonna do either File, Save for Web and Devices, or Shift, Option, Command S. And now I'm gonna save this one as Dribble. And it's as easy as that. When I'm done, I can go to File, Close, or use a short, keyboard shortcut command W. All right, pretty easy, right? So let's do another one. I'm gonna do this much quicker. Command C, Command N, Command V, deselect, shift, control, command S, and Twitter. All right, and this last time I'll do it without saying anything. And Flickr. Okay, so that takes care of our icons. So let's zoom out. And the next step is I'd like to get Let's get these post images that we're going to use. So again, I'm going to choose the arrow tool or press the letter V. And if I click on it, it'll auto select that folder group. And then at this point, you might need to filter down. And here we can see the images right there. So I can remember that I can copy anything I want. So in this case, I'm on the button group. But if I command click on this, it's going to select that layer. However, watch what happens when I command copy it. It's going to say it can't copy it because the selected area is empty. And this is because I haven't selected that layer. So we're trying to select from a layer where there's nothing there. So make sure you always select the layer before you copy. All right, deselect the background and we'll save this for the web. And in this case, it's a photo, so I'm going to make sure I save it as a JPEG. And if you want to compare sizes, you can see by default it's 113K there. But when I switch to JPEG, it shoots down drastically to 21. Now, when saving for the web, you have this quality meter. Rarely, you should almost never save it at 100%. I find that generally the best area is right around 16, and that brings us down to 16K. All right. So I'm going to save that. And we'll get outside of our icons folder and we'll call this log image one. We can always change that later. All right, and now I'm gonna do the same thing again with this next one. So we're in post two now. And as you can see here, this happens a lot where this image is much larger. So for example, if I copy this and paste it in, the author Mahmoud is using a large stock photo there, but he's clipping it to a much smaller area as you can see right there. But in this case, I want to group them together. So if I shift click both of these layers, I can merge them together. I can do that by pressing Command or Control E. And now you can see those have been grouped into one, and it's just a quicker way for me to select it. So I'll save that, deselect the background, save for web and devices, and we'll call this blog image too. Now make sure if you use this method, and there's other alternatives, but if you do that, make sure you go back a few steps by choosing edit step backward or pressing option command Z on the Mac and that'll take you back a few steps before you merge those two so keep that in mind alright next let's do the who we are section so I'll select it and we'll come down to the sidebar and let's find it so let's open this up and it's within this who we are section and you can see that again he has an image that is clipped to a container right there so if I copy this and paste it in now we get it like so, pretty easy. So let's save for web and devices once again and save it as a JPEG, that's fine. And we'll save this as who we are. Okay, and this is all there is to it.
Don't need to make it any more complicated than it is. Now let's get these to Theme Forest and Graphic River banners. So we'll close out the who we are and open up sponsors. And he has them separated into two areas and it looks like he's got a yellow background, but I'd like to duplicate that in CSS. That way if we need to later, we can switch the color scheme and not have to re-slice the images. And then he has a container, a black container, and then his image itself. So again, I'm gonna select this, copy it, paste it into a new layer and save it. And if you want, we could save it within a banners area. So let's do that, banners. And we'll save it as Graphic River. Graphic River is an Envato marketplace that allows you to buy and sell everything uh, for graphics. I use them a lot for NetTouch post images, but you can also buy like business card templates and web elements and lots of cool stuff. So let's get ThemeForest. ThemeForest, on the other hand, sells site templates and WordPress templates and landing pages and anything for CMS or static templates. Lots of cool stuff, including PSDs. All right, so we have those. We have the icons, the two blog images, the sponsors, the who we are. I also want to get recent projects. So as you'll see here, the bulk of what we're grabbing is actually stock images that will be replaced by whoever uses the template. What we do need to get though eventually is the backgrounds, and we'll do that shortly. Let's hurry up and get these. So I'm going to click this, go into our footer section, go into the big footer, and if we go into recent projects, he has the project folders. So again, right here, if I command click this, it's a much larger image that's clipped down to what we have back here. So if I select this, paste it in, now we have that image. And we'll say here, we'll say go back to images and we'll call it recent project one. All right, let's do it for the next one. So I'm gonna command click on this one again. And as you'll see what I'm doing here is if I command click on the image itself, it's going to select the entire image, including what has been clipped. So what I'm doing instead is command clicking or control clicking the actual container itself. And then I switch over to the image and that's the selection I use to copy. recent project two. All right, let's grab the last two. And when you do this all the time, I promise you'll get to the point where you can slice these designs up in no time at all. And then finally, let's get that last one. Recent project four. All right, so let's zoom out and let's grab the button now. So I'm gonna choose this button and let's see what we have here. If I hide this, I can filter down more easily into what I'm working with. And sometimes you may need to play around with it a little bit to find the selection you need. In this case, I need the button and we see he has a highlight and let's zoom in just a little bit more. He has a highlight, which just adds a little bit there. And then he has the noise and then he has the button background itself. Now this is a yellow background, so we are going to be limited to this color scheme, which is why, if possible, try to use CSS to create these backgrounds. In this case, it's okay. So I'm gonna merge both of those, and if I select that, we get the whole button. But I don't wanna copy this whole button because I wanna allow it to be as wide as possible even if the word within it is extremely long. So what I'll do instead is take a small slice of it and that way I can repeat it as much as I need to. Now I'm doing this by selecting the marquee tool and if I select outside of the bounds, I can still press the space bar and if I hold that down, I can then move my selection around. So now I'm going to position it correctly, bring it all the way to the bottom, and then don't select too thin because then you'll be able to tell that that noise has been repeated. But if you select something like this, it should be just fine. So again, as you've learned, copy, paste, save for web and devices, and we'll call this button BG. Save. All right, so let's zoom out and we're doing really well. But now what I wanna grab is the background. Now, if you'll remember in the last lesson, I made a note that we can't, unfortunately, just grab something like this and have it repeat for the width of the screen. And that's because as soon as this text increases, let's say you add three paragraphs to your banner, it would come down like this and it would filter and spiel through this box right here. So I need to make a separate image 
for this box. And again, later we can use a sprite generator to group all of these small images into one. That way we only have to load one larger image. So we'll begin. And here I'm going to grab and I found that when working with backgrounds, sometimes it's easier, because there's multiple layers, to temporarily flatten the image. And I can do that by going to Layer, and scrolling to the bottom, and choosing Flatten Image. And what this does is it groups everything into one layer. It flattens all the layers down. But then at this point, I can begin slicing out without having to worry about grouping multiple layers together. So here, we're going to grab the yellow background, and I know that's not going to need to increase. So I can grab that. The navigation area probably won't either. So I can confidently grab something like this. So let's do that first. Save it for web. And let's play around with the size. Ping. Nope, JPEG is still going to be better because there are gradients and some noise there. Now you can also play around with checking optimized. You see that reduces the size a good bit. Progressive will generally increase the size. So keep it like that. And we'll choose bg.jpg for the name. Let's close that out. And now I'm going to make another background right here. But as you can see that he has polka dots right here. So there's a couple tools that you can do. But what I generally do is I make a selection. And you might need to play around with this to make sure that it repeats correctly. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more so you can see. So I'm going to select from the top here all the way to the end. And that should be good. So that when that repeats again, this here will come up right here. When this repeats vertically, this will come right here as well. But like I said, if you make a mistake, you can always go and do it again. So we'll start with this one, save it for Web and Devices, and we'll call this Banner BG. Now, with that background, we can set it to the background of our banner, and it doesn't matter how long it gets. Now, if we zoom in, you can see that we also have some noise here within the inner banner area. Now. Like I said, there are ways to create noise with JavaScript and Canvas. And I may show you one of those, but for general purposes, especially if this is your first slice, let's just keep it simple. Zoom in and slice out a square. Something like that. And I'll save for web and devices. And again, I'll save this as banner inner BG. All right, let's see if we need anything else. So we have this. Now, there's a texture back there, but we've already sliced out a little piece here, so that texture will be represented. The shadow here will be represented via what we sliced out. We have our inner area. This fun text that's a gradient, I'm going to show you a way to do that with custom fonts and creating text shadows and such. And we could even look at outlines as well, which is exclusive to WebKit browsers at the moment. We're going to create the input background. We've got our icons. We'll create the arrow with CSS. And believe it or not, that's everything we had to do. So talking through it, not very long at all. If you're doing this yourself, you'll get to the point where you can do this in roughly about 5 to 10 minutes at the most. So that will do it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we're going to begin working with the 960 grid systems. So I'll see you in the next lesson.